The last problem, problem 6, involves running some code that first requires you to do some installation. So I'm going to command click on this and it'll open the script up in a new browser tab. I'll go ahead and click on raw, select everything, copy, and then go back into here and create a new our script tab and I'll go ahead and paste the script in there. In order to be able to use the script I need to install three packages so I will just go through and install these one at a time. I could go down here to the package manager and install them that way but it's easier if I just run these commands here. So I'll click on the first line and run that and I see down in the console window that it's doing a whole bunch of stuff. So it'll take a few moments for it to finish this. Tidyverse is actually a package that contains a lot of different sub packages. And so that's why it takes a really long time to install. But it's worth installing it because we'll be using it in a lot of the subsequent lessons. One of the nice things about posit.cloud is that for each of your different workspaces, it will remember from time to time what packages you've already installed. So that allows you to install a different set of packages in each one of your projects if it turns out that there's incompatibilities in the packages that you have installed in one project, it won't have any effect on another project. All right, I have uh, completed downloading those packages. Now I'll go ahead and do the maps package. So I'll click run. That one didn't take very long. And let's do car. All right, that one's all done. What I've accomplished at this point is the packages are now downloaded onto my cloud server. And if I go to the packages listing and I look for maps, for example, I will see that it's now present in my list of installed packages. So the code that's in the maps package is available to me, but it's not actually loaded yet because I haven't used the library command to load it into my script. So I will go ahead and run this line to run tidyverse and then magritter. Now that I've loaded these libraries and made them available to my code, I can use them by going through and running the rest of the script. I can run the script by simply clicking on each line one at a time and whatever is done in that line will show up down here in my console window. So I can just click run and run and run and now over here in the plots window I see the results here. So I'll go ahead and click run again and now it's going to make another plot which is a box and whisker plot displaying the same data that I did in the map. I'm going to go ahead and remove these plots because I want to show you what happens if I just highlight and run all the code at once. So I'm going to highlight all of the lines here and now when I do run it will go through them all at once and so I can see here's the first plot that it made and if I click on the right arrow there's the second plot. So if you want to see what's going on in each individual step in a script you can just click run 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 and it'll go through and run them one at a time. Or you can highlight them and it will do all the ones that are highlighted. I'm not going to click on the rest of these, you can do that yourself and see what happens in these different scripts. So the answer to the question that is asked in problem six, why do you need to only do the first command once, but the second command every time you rerun the script? So the first commands are the install ones and the second ones are the library ones. And the reason is that you only have to download the packages one time. That's what installing is, is downloading the packages. However, 
you need to load the library every time in order to make that downloaded code become available to your program. Each time you restart the program, it needs to have those packages be loaded into the script so that they are available as a part of the code of the script.